the change in time or whatever. Whoever's here, you're here and you're meant to be, so it should be good. Um, but I want to start with a little bit of a quick chazara with everybody here. Did anybody, like, not... Oh, you're new. Are you a total I'm newbie or no? no? I like start from the first, and I'm like sort of... Oh, okay, okay fine. Okay, yeah. so we'll do, like... A quick five minute Hazara, like I'm literally, I'm going to set my like watch and I'm going to do a five minute Hazara and then we'll see what you remember, what you know. Also, this chapter, chapter 26 is kind of like a standalone chapter. It was like after one through 25, we learned so much. 26 is kind of something new. So the Hazara will be very quick and you'll say the word so it'll go really fast. So we started off by saying that we came down here as a neshama, we promised to be good and not to be bad. And then we discovered this concept of a benoni and that we have two parts of us, nefesh <coughs> Hello, Kiss and Nefesh um, Bahamas. Okay. Um, shout out to all the people like who listen in. I know a few people like told me that they answer the questions on here. So it's, yeah. So the, as you're listening to it on Spotify. Okay. So we have two Nishamas, but then our Nishama, which Nishama came to us first? Nefesh Bahamas, right? We have this animal soul. We start off with that. Then comes later on this Nefesh kiss, which comes from Hashem, which totally wants something different. We have two sides to us who's in the driver's seat, that's the most important thing. Then we explained what a neshama is. A neshama is basically Hashem unfolding himself here into this world with soul powers, right? We explained the concept of Hashem having all these midos, all these kofos, right? And he gives it and infuses it into us, but our soul just can't walk around. Just like a soul, it needs food and clothing. So we have soul food, we have soul clothing, and that's how we can interact in this world. But it's always going to be fighting the Nefesh HaBahamas. Those two are always going to be at wit's end. But we explain that really the Nefesh HaBahamas is not a bad guy. He's not a Yitzhahara. He's just referred to as the Sitra Achra. It's funny. I was having a conversation yesterday at um, the Shiva house and Paloma walked in and she was saying something. She was talking to somebody. She's like, it was just my Sitra Achra. And the person on the phone was like, you were clearly talking to Peggy today. Because like, otherwise, who uses that terminology? But like, it's it's just like a more refined way of like looking at the Yitzhahara. Because today we're also going to be talking about the Yitzhahara. So it's it's just a more refined way. Of, and also like a, like not such a scary way. It's just the other side. It just means I'm not connecting to Hashem at that moment. So go back to connecting everything back to Hashem. Then we discussed that there is a, a person who has life almost easy, but he has perfect insides and perfect outsides, and he's referred to as a tzaddik. A tzaddik. And then somebody who has bad outsides, um, but bad insides, the two of those, that's like the worst version of a Russia, which is Russia vip. Russia, I know, we need like words up here. Russia viralo, right? Russia viralo. Sight words, okay, Russia Viralo. I know it happens to be Nahama just came home with sight words, and I'm like, these are the sight words, this is what we need. Okay, I'm gonna talk to Tivia after. She's the marketer here. <laughs> we gotta market like with, like just like with faggy words, right? Like it could be tiny with faggy, Brussels with faggy, but we'll make cards with these words. Okay, so then we have the, the Russia Russia Viralo and the Russia Vitovo with somebody who has perfect um outsides but messes up every once in a while and even if he messes up a little bit he still messes up and then there's what we strive for which is the benoni and we spent four chapters talking about a benoni and a benoni is somebody who has what i feel like we need analogies like what does their insides look like what does a benoni's insides look like are they perfect like a tzaddik no, no. but what is perfect for a benoni Stry perfection, but also his outsides are perfect. Like he doesn't mess up, he doesn't slip up, he holds it, he controls himself, but inside he's like, uh, you know, drop soda can, right? Like it's like he's just waiting and all these things are happening and like he can't, he has to continuously control himself. So then we explain that Abinoni, even though he has perfect outsides, the insides are always going to be getting him. He always has to be on guard, he always has to be up, like a million, you know, like. Some people are very deep sleepers, like I'm a very deep sleeper, so I will not wake up until my kid is like literally in my face, like standing there like, can I have a drink, you know? They scare, you. They scare me, but like some people, they always hear the other side. Um, okay, <laughs> I'm like reading some comments. Um, so here the idea is that a Benoni is somebody who constantly struggling on the inside, but their outside is always perfect. So. 
Why did I get to the example of the kid who's sleeping? Oh, so you put your you put your nefesh abahamis. You can put your insides to sleep, but you always have to be on guard that they're going to wake up. Okay, it's like the first two years of life. You always have to expect that, like from zero to two, somebody's going to wake you up at some point, and we hope by two everybody's fully sleeping. Anytime I complain to my mother that I'm like, oh, my kids were up all night, she's like, none of you slept through the night until you're two years old. I'm like, ma, that's your fault. Like you should have like get the you know baby wise and like put us to sleep and things like that. But the but the yitzhara will never fully go to sleep. The the Nefesh Bahamas never fully goes to sleep. He's always, and he can lay dormant, but the more you learn to put him to sleep, the better you get at it. But we have to know that he's always going to be there. He's laying latent. Then we started learning our first tool, which was, what was our first toolbox? Well, everyone's very tired. It's like the day after Yontif. Like, what? <laughs> you know, like the kids in the background, they're like, ooh, ooh. I never understood that. And then like two fingers if you need to use the bathroom, right? Um, so, what? Three for an emergency? That I never knew. Oh, I'm... <laughs> that was my teacher. That was your teacher. Um, so, this idea... Oh, hi. See, we were just waiting for you. We're yeah. struggling with the way that we have a vocabulary. <laughs> Hi, we needed you. We, we're, we're up to the vocabulary. Okay, so the first tool was Mal Shatale, but what's the first version of Mal Shatale? How do you utilize it? What is it? The first version of, of using your brain rules over your heart is in a very much impulse control. I want to do something bad? No, fake Your brain does not want to do something bad. Control yourself. No, it's really, really hard. Control yourself. And the more you more you control yourself, the better you get at it. But then we said that there also can be that like side effect where that it's too tight. Like so much impulse control that you're going to burst when you, when the slightest thing sets you off. So like I had this yesterday. I don't know. Like this season is just very hard with like schedules and kaparos and tashlach and like a lot of stuff to do and making kreplach. Like in my mind, I'm like, there's so many things to do in the spiritual side, but then you can't let the other things you know, fall to the side, like your children, your work, or whatever, but like Yontif sometimes take you over. So like a whole day yesterday, I'm like, I have it such, under, under such control, Malshat Alev, I got this, not a problem, more carpels, more bar mitzvahs, I got this, and then like something totally threw me off. My in-laws were supposed to have kapars in their house, I made a dismissal change to pick up my kids because, you know what I'm talking about, dismissal changes are like the worst thing, like call the hotline, leave a message, send an email, don't anyway, don't call after two, and then they're like, you can't call after four. I'm like, it is three, 58. I'm like, you could do a dismissal change. No, we can't find him. He has recess. And I, that, like, I feel so bad that one secretary, like, I just took it out on her. That was me just, like, opening it up. It was, like, a whole day I was able to control myself. It's always Obviously, the days that you think you have it together. Yes. And you're like, I got this. I'm, I'm so... I'm so... I'm so in control. I'm so in control. control. And I was like, even, like, talking... I pull on what make it today. So I even, like, hazarded with her yesterday. And I'm like, we are under such control. We have so much control. This one secretary threw me off, like, derailed me. Then we found another comparison. Then we drove there. But then we had to stop at the bar mitzvah first. And he said it was in tag. But really, it was in... Rabbi Force Shul that moved, but basically like, just driving around the car for an hour, we get the air filing to the cars, no more chickens. And I was just like, I, I literally burst out laughing. I was like, it was just so funny because the, the, the more you think you have control, the tighter and the tighter and tighter you do it, it's something, you're going to lose it. Then I just started laughing. I don't know if that was like a... Crying. It was like a really crying, but I just had to laugh and I was just laughing. I'm like, okay, Hashem, like, I'm going to bring you into this situation. This was, this was too much impulse control for me today. So what's my second option of Moshe Al-Talev? The second one is to do it slowly. Not like being so good at yourself. So, so, so proud, I got this, I got this, I got this. I keep doing it, keep doing it until I can't do it. The second version of it is every minute just meditate on the little things that are working. The little things that are good. It was a gorgeous day. The weather was amazing. It felt like sukkahs. Little things. And then we create, what do we create when we slowly meditate on the... Tfunos. yes. Thank you. Okay, you get plus two today. Um, tfunos. Tfunos are those like little pseudo emotions that is a better and a slower way of just impulse control. And that's Malshal Dalai. The second way where I'm going to slowly like take stock of my day and meditate over it. But that also takes a very, very long time. So you have to be down for a long ride. That's okay. Then we discussed another tool. So there was Moshe Atale version A, which is impulse control, version B, which is creating tabunos. And then we said, one second, that's going to take a whole lifetime. This is so long. I don't want to keep doing this. This is so much work. I mean, it, I, I want to do it, but it's just taking too long. So then we spoke about an emergency button that is latent 
I will always think of you because when you were like, late Ava Mesuteris. That, that's something that's literally been handed down as a spiritual inheritance from our great-great-grandparents that we will always fall back on and can always whip out in case of emergency. And that is this act. If I, if I yell at my child, if I get mad at the secretary, if I get mad at the little kid who was selling chickens, right? Whatever it is, that act that I do will totally disconnect me from Hashem. I need to stop immediately and say, one second, where do I want to be? Who am I? Do I want to be aligned with Hashem at that moment? Or do I want to be aligned with my own like inner turmoil, emotions, whatever? And at that moment, you can pull yourself back to connect to Hashem. That was pulling out your spiritual adrenaline, and that's what gets you further. Okay, that's 1 through 25. That, like we said, is really all of Tanya. And I, I've been speaking to people over Yantif and I see how like it really becomes ingrained in you. It becomes part of you. And it's 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 like a very powerful toolkit that you can utilize at any time. But then Tanya continues. Why? Why do we go into 26 and all the way now we're going to be discussing 26 to 34? Why do we need something? We just gave you all the information. We told you the software that you have. We told you the hardware that you have. We told you the tools that you have. You could implement, go home, and just be amazing people. Amazing Benoit. Why can't we do it? What did we speak about last week? It's been a long week. It's been a long week. I'm like, here, anybody on Instagram, let's see if anybody knows. Um, we spoke about Simcha. We spoke about Simcha, right. So why did we speak about Simcha? We said you could have all the tools in the world. We gave the muscle of the wrestler, right? And we said the wrestler is the strongest, right? I spoke about my grandfather, he loved wrestling. And he is the strongest person. And he has, he, he goes to Fit Studio and he lifts weights and everything. And he's amazing. And then all of a sudden, he is in a bad mood. He woke up, something ticked him off, the coffee machine wasn't working, I don't know, there wasn't milk. This is always my problem. And I'm like scarred from not having milk, so I always have like six milks in my fridge. And then like, they're always spoiling, so it's like a vicious cycle. But like, you have everything you need, something ticks you off, and that's it. He lost the wrestling match. What was it? It was his mood. So we realized that it's not just like, oh, it's a mitzvah to be happy. No, 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 you cannot do mitzvahs if you are not happy. It's like, it's like the, the, the what's it called? Like the, the foundation almost for everything that you are going to do and the way that you are going to do it and implement it is being emotionally healthy. And if you're not emotionally healthy and present, you cannot implement this. You could, but it's gonna be half wholehearted. Like it's not gonna, it's gonna be half hearted. It's not gonna be, you're not gonna be fully in it. And also we explain that like doing things besimcha really just makes it better. Anything that you do when you do a besimcha, it just makes it better. It's not just like I'm in a good mood and maybe, yes, sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. And like, I'm looking at you because you were talking about like, is this real? Is this like happiness feeling real? Like, I don't know, maybe if it's not. Oh, come in. Someone knocking? Okay. Yeah? Oh, it could be like Gourmet Lab or Frankel's or some order. I don't know. Sorry. Um, uh, thank you. Oh. It is, yeah. Okay, perfect. You could be right there. This not is cheers. like, <laughs> it's not cheers. I never, this is so, I mean, it's not bad. It is so good. Like, by the way, Target shipped became so fast. I put it in order. Like, I went to bathe my kid. I came back. I'm like, I don't have wipes. I ordered wipes. Like, literally a half hour later. It was like, right, yeah, yeah, but so then do it from the, the one on... Yeah? Yeah. Selection. It doesn't have a good selection. Yeah, yeah. No, they really don't have a good selection. They don't have anything. And they it's message you. I'm going to say it's a bodega. Milk and wipes. Have a nice day. It's so crazy. Oh, perfect timing. Um, okay. Oh, by the way, and about, as we get into this, into chapter 20, <coughs> we're going to do chapter 26B, I did want to, I, and I forgot, I wanted to start this class and I wanted to dedicate it to Nishmas, Mikey's father. David Ben Shalom. Right. Um, he actually, like, I know this is crazy to say, his Leviah was on Monday. Monday. And, okay, Rabbi Yassi was there and he spoke, and, like, everyone, like, speaking about him. I'm like, it just, when you speak about somebody and then you totally understand, like, the apple falls, like, right from the tree, like, Mikey, like, is his father. So I'm going to be dedicating this class. Um, Leila Nishmas him. And I know that his sister Jen is always listening. So 
for her also. Okay, so we were literally just getting to the chapter 26. We did part one, and we explained last week that you have to have simcha in order to be able to attack all of this, and that's why this chapter comes here, because even though we would have been finished, if we don't have the emotional well, like the, the, if we don't have the emotional well-being for it, we're not gonna be able to get to where we need to get. Um, so this part we spoke about last week that what do you do when you deal with physical problems? So we said there are physical problems, right? right? Like not, let's say children you have struggles with, your finances you have struggles with, and your health, right? So those are the three, three things that we struggle with. And we said, when you struggle in those areas, how do you tap into simcha? If you're, you're, you are struggling, you're struggling to make a living, you're struggling to, um, with your, to have children, to raise your children, all these struggles, what do you do? We explained like at the end, the bottom line was that if at that moment you can find good in it, there's two types of good, okay? There's two types of things that bring you joy. We said joy just for the sense of joy is of Odazara. Only worshiping happiness, because this is what makes me feel good, I need PTO and I, whatever you need, just doing things to make you feel good, that's one level of happiness, but doing and, and finding a deeper level of happiness, we explain that there's two worlds, Olam that is like the world that is hidden and the world that's revealed. So there's revealed good, which is very good, which is Instacart and which is nice weather and, and good Cholomai plans, right? Like. We're really stressing right now about all my plans. And my sister was like, come to Virginia Beach. And I'm like, cannot stick my kids in the car for seven hours. Like, I can't. And I'm like, should I fly to Virginia Beach? And I'm like, no, we have to be home for the shul. So I'm like, forget it. We're going to wake up late, shake lulav. Everyone eat breakfast in the sukkah. Go to Adventure Park and come home and eat supper in the sukkah. Because like once you have boys with like mincha, meyer, this, that, like becomes like a whole day or like is around that and the sukkah, you know? I always think like those gluten-free people, like they probably like... It's pretty easy for them. Um, <laughs> these are the things that you have to think about, like when you're, like, I don't know. I, I feel like about the opposite way. This is what they worry about. They they can't eat gluten. Oh, I know. But that was like right. I'm trying to find the hidden point. They have to go to the side. You should do it. What? <laughs> yeah. I know. Okay, fine. So she might be going with okay. Raquel. Okay. I know that's the problem. Maybe I'll join if I can get on a plane. Um, so there's revealed good, which are things that we see, and then there's the hidden good that like comes up as difficulties. We don't fully understand it, but if you want to tap into something deeper, you're going to have to work a little bit harder. So we ended up by saying, do you want to live a happy life or do you want to live a life connected to Hashem? That doesn't mean that your life connected to Hashem can't be happy, but it's on a superficial level, the first level of happiness, but then there's a way of finding Hashem in the deepest, darkest places, in the hidden world, and that is what is going to take you to a much higher level. Okay, so that was physical problems. Now we're going to deal this chapter with spiritual problems. So what are spiritual problems? Lack of bitachon. Lack of bitachon. Anxiety. Anxiety. <laughs> it's connected. What? Connected. It's connected, yeah. right? Lack of bitachon, stress. There's like this terminology. Connection. Lack of connection. There's this terminology that always says, like people like associate Jewish people with having Guilt. what? Guilt. Jewish guilt. I don't know where it came from. Like, we have Jewish noses and we have, like, Jewish guilt or whatever. There was, like, that whole drama. Did you see that movie that they, like, made a prosthetic nose? Do you know what I'm talking about? They, they like, and they, there was, like, this, like, with, like, Bradley Cooper, like, that he, they, they made him, like, a prosthetic nose. Like, a Jewish nose is a big nose. Like, and I'm like, does that come along with guilt? Like, where's the guilt? Like, is it impacted over here? Like, what is Jewish guilt? Like, what, what is, like, give me an example of Jewish guilt. Not trying hard enough. You did something wrong. Oh, I feel so bad, right? Like, do you say that? Like, oh my gosh, I the worst morning. I feel so bad. Like, there's always, I always say, like, I feel so bad is just like a code word for like allowing yourself to like speak Lush and Hara. Like, oh, I heard they're getting divorced. Oh my gosh, it's so sad. I feel so bad for them. If you feel bad for them, call her up, see what she needs help with, get her a therapist, bring her over a dinner. Like, don't be like, I feel so bad. Like, it becomes like, Oh, oh, we feel so bad for this person, right? Like, we're having guilt. Like, oh, I'm the worst. I was not a good mommy this morning. Like, we love to, like, we like to get, like, badge of honors. I have, like, with my friends, like, every morning, like, we, like, go through the morning. And, like, sometimes, like, it's a little bit more detailed than others. Sometimes it's, like, it was just really bad. Don't talk to me. But then you have this thing that you take the guilt of, let's say, your bad morning or Shabbos afternoon, or something that happened, and then you just take it with you for a whole day. Like sometimes even 24 hours. Like, I don't know, for me, I used to feel this Matzah Shabbos. Like I would just feel like this 
horrible feeling. And everyone's like, it's near new show me. You say you're leaving. I'm like, no, actually it's probably because I did not exercise enough today. And I probably need a little bit more sugar or less sugar or whatever. But like there's this, and it, obviously that's coming from a higher place. So yes, it is the new show me. You say you're leaving. But there was like this like nauseous feeling. I would get a migraine every month of Shabbos. Like I'm not going from show. I'm like, don't wake me up for Abdullah. It's gluten. Really? I know. <laughs> By the way, I switched to sourdough and now I don't have these problems. Sorry, I have brain fog on Sunday. Is that what it is? I it's like this it. like yeah. coffee, yeah, someone's saying like really like a like a splitting headache that I don't want to be woken up for Abdullah. Like you know that feeling? You're sleeping and it's like yeah, wow. it's challah? Yeah. I call it like a food coma. It's a food coma, right. Like right, I would get this like weekly off. migraine and I was like, don't, I don't want to be here, right? So it's like this feeling where you just, you, you spiral out of control when it comes to guilt. So we want to look, the whole purpose of these few chapters are we want to connect Hashem with Simcha, right? We said joy is very important. So how do I find joy when I'm constantly being hard on myself? Like when there's this guilt, when there's this feeling of achiness, like, I did something wrong in the eyes of Hashem and I just feel bad about it. So what ends up happening is that I fall into this trap of guilt. So it's like, so what can we do about it? What happens? Like you feel this guilt. So what's your immediate reaction? What does Hashem want from me? What does Hashem want from me? Right? I, by the way, sometimes, but so, that's what it should be, right? <laughs> But I'll say that in a negative way. I'll be like, Hashem, what do you want from me? Right? That's the opposite. Not feeling guilty, so you have to really work on it. You have to really, it's really, really hard. But, that, really hard. but like human nature is to be like, oh, I already did this wrong. I might as well do this or right. look for pleasure. Now we're right. If you're in guilt, then you look for. But pleasure. even that guilty right. feeling when you're trying to make a decision and you're not sure what to do, and you have two good choices: one's working for you, one's not working for you, but one's better, one's not. But you know the set of choices? So it's very hard because what the Yitzhahara does here, or the Sitra Ahra, whatever he does here, he tricks you in the deepest way when it comes to guilt. On a physical way, like, he'll get the easy things. You're like, oh, I know it's Yitzhahara, right? Like, oh, eat not kosher. Like, no, sorry. Like, for me, Baruch Hashem, at that point, maybe for some people it's not. But, like, for some people, like, okay, it's not even an issue. That's the Yitzhahara. He's not doing a good job. What happens here with the spiritual problems is the Yitzhahara is like, he like wins like an Oscar. Like for like the it's, best dressed, highest, like right. It's Little Alice, Alice, right. I know, I love That's that. You know I was head of Mishnaris and I still don't know what Little Alice means. I always like go to my sister Lo Shifra. I'm like, is this Little Alice? So I'm like, she's a halacha, Rabbitin. But also you're my halacha hotline. But the idea where the Yitzhahara says, no, it's good. I'm pious. I'm a tzaddik. I'm going to tell you, you have to feel bad because that's the chua cycle. I'm going to kick you off in the chua cycle. No, actually, you're going to kick me down the entire road. I'm never going to come back up here because I'm going to say, I did this wrong. I may as well do that wrong. Like, you have those cheat days? Like, homie, I'm going to have to call her out here. But, like, she's always, like, if you have, like, once you start the morning off bad, derailed, like, for the rest of the day. But, like, in the best way. Like, she's the best. She's the best. And she knows it. She's aware of it. Don't sit in your guilt. Sitting in guilt makes you have the worst day ever. Right. So, but the Yitzhar is so smart because he doesn't do it in a guilty way. He does it in like in a confessional way, like I did something so bad, and then you start listing all the things that you did wrong, and then you go into like a guilt meditation. Like, do you ever do that with people? Like sometimes I'm like, you did this wrong, and then they're like, okay, fine, but you also did this and this and this and this. And last week when you didn't say hello to me, I thought you were mad at me, and then I got upset, and that's why I burnt the supper, and then I got mad. It happened this morning. Like, I mean. I like we're all case studies for this, right? Like what? Rumination. It's rumination, right? So like this morning, I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to school. It's a yomiyun. I'm not. We don't have to learn anything. Like, and I'm like, no, actually, you always come home with good stories. Like by the yomiyun, she's like, oh, ma, like oh, no, I don't want to go. I'm not going to school. It's fine. That's Tara. Her daughter is here, still sleeping. Anyway, I pushed her, but probably in the worst way to go to school. And she's like, you try to give people chizik. You should let me sleep. That's chizik. And I'm like, okay, but. The, the, the second I felt guilty about waking her up, I should have let her go to sleep. I got upset at my other son, and he picked it up. He's like, Ma, you're just in a bad mood because of that happened. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And, and then it goes and goes and goes. And this is what happens. It's the HR saying, you're having a bad day. Every single time you get upset the next thing, you're having a bad day. This is the worst day. Then you start texting your friend. Oh, my God, this is the worst day, right? I don't know if anybody does that. I had the hardest morning, or this one was so not nice. Or that. And it's, it's just the HR, and it's just a Sitra Ahra. So what we have to do is what you said really is to bring Hashem in it. But like our gut reaction is to let it go and go to the furthest, darkest places that we don't want to go there. How would you stop that spiral this morning? 
I'm not using you as an example. Okay, so it happens to be, I recently heard from Chase Tapp, he's talking about adolescents. So I don't know if, like, your kids are yet, like, teenagers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so teenagers is really a whole nother power show. Like, he, the way to deal with teenagers is really, we should do a whole series on, like, teenagers because they have skills, but they don't have everything, and really we're supposed to be helping them sort out their issues. Like, they have their issues and they have their thing, but we're just there to help them and find themselves. Never to say, he said, like, never to be like, oh, Hashem is, so, like, we're, we're so proud of you, like, if you do this. Like, Hashem is so proud of you if you do this. No. You have to tell them that that is not you. You are not the person who sleeps late. You are the kind of person who's going to get the most out of Yomi Yun because you will get, like, good little, like, tidbits. Like, she went to Jackie Baton this weekend. I'm like, those, that's amazing. Like, you can capture. You have to very clearly say that this is not who I am. This is not who you are. And stop yourself there. But have you stop fully. So the, the Balatani gives a very clear, like, oh, literally, like, he gives you, like, the, like a, a list of exactly how to go through these feelings. And, and it's actually, it's very methodical. So l well, let's go through it. So the idea, like you were saying, is to really to meditate on God, right? We have to be like, Hashem, where are you in this picture? I'm driving, there's traffic, there's no parking, this one's not listening. Hashem, where are you? Let me find you in this picture and let me meditate on you. The thing is that, when you have these feelings of guilt and they pop up, and this is like he says, like a dead giveaway to know that it's Yitzhahara, because we said he's a very good actor and he hides under like, like, a, like a tzaddik clothing. The way to find it and identify it is to say, one second, why am I feeling this right now? Let's say like you're in the middle of grocery shopping or you're in the middle of your morning routine or in the middle of cooking and all of a sudden this like feeling like arises from you and it's like, oh my God, you were so not good this morning. Like you did something like that was so not, it. why did you say that about that person? When this feeling just comes out of nowhere and does not have like a place and time and an actual space to live in, you know that it's not real. You have to tell that thought, I am smart enough, I have the cognitive abilities to stop you, I'm gonna stop you right now, and I'm gonna put you in a place where you belong. Where do you belong? You ever heard of like Hajman Hanefesh? Like at night before you go to sleep, even though I, I'm not so good at it, but now we have, we're gonna have a Thank You Hashem song about Hajman Hanefesh, it's coming out soon, whenever, whenever it does come out, but the idea to be able to take stock of like your day is, a, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's like a big breast of, I'm like looking at you. A big breast of concept too, like Hajman Nefesh. Well, like a seminary thing. I was talking to Paloma yesterday and she's like, I in seminary, you found it. Right. No, seminary no. is like a Hajman Nefesh moment. Like now it's like, I'm lucky if I say the first line of Shema before I fall asleep, like let alone Hajman Nefesh, right? So a Hajman Nefesh can be- The first part. <laughs> well, it can be the, the first part. The first line, like Barsha. Yeah, <laughs> but like I'll see you, Mala. I'll, I'll sing along. Um, but this idea where at six times, so I'm, I'm good. Right. Full back. Full everybody. It's funny. My grandmother, Bobby Bella, she says um, Shema once, and then she says it again for all the people or something who didn't say Shema, and then she benches at the end of the day. Always. Like, even if she did a wash, she just benches. I mean, she's 96 years old. She can make the rules. Like, yeah. She's allowed to, but she benches for the whole day. Like, just for all her brothers. Um, so, Chajman and Nefesh, I'm sure she does it. But, like, Chajman and Nefesh is kind of this idea of, like, just taking stock of, like, how your day went. But it's a very specific space and time for you to do it. Do not let these intruding thoughts get you in the middle of the day out of context. Basically, if it's not Yom Kippur, and if it's not the bedtime Shema, then I can take that thought and I can push it aside. Three-year-olds can't because they don't have the brain capacity to be able to do it. Animals, they can't either. But guess what? Three-year-olds and animals don't have guilt, right? If like an animal makes a mess, like they don't like, oh shoot, it's like, oops, I'll clean up, clean up, clean No, animals don't have that. They don't have the cognitive ability to say, this thought cannot be in my head right now, I'm gonna push it to the side. A little kid can't, but as they get older, remember that example of like Nahama being able to sit here and stay quiet for like 20 minutes, like at the end she was like wiggling, but if she has that ability to control herself, then she has the ability to move a thought out of her head even though she could not get Kaparos out of her head last night until we got there and there were no more chickens. And then we just took one picture with the chicken and then we moved on and then we'll do it with money tomorrow. But there was no chickens. We were looking we all, all you don't do chicken. Not with little girls. No. <laughs> so this idea where if you feel this feeling of like whether it's you're baking or you're in the grocery or you're in the car and you just feel this like feeling of Jewish guilt of like that's not Jewish. By the way, I'm pretty sure that the guilt what? It's Catholic. It's like confessions. Father, I've sinned. Like, what? Here, pay $20. And now I'm thinking, 
we do kapara, so. Yeah, and isn't that shuba that you have to have, like, admit? Mm-hmm. Admit that you did it, so right. That, but not yeah, in a but way. That's not guilt. But that's it's not a guilt. It's a different thing than guilt. Guilt is not, guilt, guilt is. is like feeling this, like, uh, getting stuck in the spiral of, like, I'm a bad person. Okay. And with right. Catholicism, you can only be absolved through the church, right? Right. It's not a personal. They thing. believe that they're born. You're born out of sin, right? Like, like by the, if you it's think like about it, like it's the opposite. Doing. It's the opposite. By us, it's like a yichud between a man and woman is the most beautiful thing. In Catholicism, it's not. A pope doesn't get married. Rabbis have twelve children, but a pope he never gets married. Why? Because that's considered a sin, and that's and then if you are involved in intimacy, which is a bad thing, then it's then it's then it's guilt. Then it's bad. Then it's the nuns and the things or whatever. Right? They don't get married. There's this idea where there is this concept of guilt related to the deepest things that like. In Yiddishkeit, it's not. It's, it's, it's the biggest thing. It's the deepest thing. We don't starve ourselves all the time. We have food. It's not that food is bad. And No, on Yom Kippur, we have a set time for it. We have a set time for that feeling of confessions, but not guilt. Guilt is totally sitra achra. It's not... It's a lot not, of times you feel guilt because you did something wrong. Like, it's not like, oh, I'm randomly feeling guilt. I said something nasty about someone else. There's a reason why I feel this way. But you should feel bad. You should feel guilty. And where does that guilt take you? So that's a great example because I'm like, oh, I feel so guilty. I should not have said that, right? It's more like maybe I should be working on myself not to say something bad about someone else. Not like, oh, find Hashem in this or whatever I'm saying you should when you're feeling like that. But you could take what you feel of why you feel guilty and learn, oh, maybe next time I shouldn't do this and then I won't feel guilty. We don't have guilt, but we have harata. Right. We right. have harata. It's like, I feel bad. I think we have like a, a different definition of guilt like in our mind. That's, that's the thing. Like guilt no, right. but there is, it's very... It, that, what you're saying is like what I was struggling with this also. Like I was like learning this out and I'm like, but isn't, is there, is there a space, is there a time for guilt? Like is there a space for guilt? No, harat is not guilt. I think the right. Well, guilt doesn't do work. That, that, that is, that we are products of our everywhere. For you in a bad state of mind. Right, right. It doesn't make you be better. Regret, right. Yes. right. Feeling guilty doesn't, doesn't make you regret do better. Regret. Right. Feeling guilty feeling does does nothing you're easy. Right. So it's like you take one thing from this class today is that you should they never do ever do feel guilt. And by the way, that the channel is stopping your guilt into something. Also, save like it for later. Right. Okay. Save it for later when you want to go through your day. Save it for Yom Kippur, not now. What you have to do immediately is like let's say let's let's go through the steps. So he says that, that word. what is it? It's not guilt, it's it's Regret. 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 And by the way, like even going back to the Russia, we said there was Russia Viralo, Russia Vitovlo. Russia Vitovlo feels regret. He does. He says he feels harata. He did something wrong. He feels bad. But the Russia Viralo, none. Nothing. It's not even, it, it, there is no guilt. There is no regret. Anything. Um, I look at it as like two different people. There are people who He's either joined guilty. online. She said guilt is like the version of happiness that you were say, discussing that's lazy and easy. It's easy to feel guilty. Yes, you need action and introspection. Right. Um, I was saying this yesterday. Oh, miss her. Also, <laughs> yes, we miss you. Um, no, but that's really what it is, that it's very easy to feel guilty. Like, oh, I feel so bad, right? Oh, it's feel guilty. It's like... And I, and I don't want to compare this, but I remember after there was like this whole Netflix series on like 13 Reasons Why about a girl who like committed suicide, right? Oh you, and oh, it's, I have a Hannah, and I was watching that show right when I had, I could not name her Hannah because that, that girl. Or even she Emma because I couldn't name her Hannah. Right. So <laughs> honestly, in my office, like we're in mental health field, we were just saying how like this kind of glorified yeah, suicide. Like, yes, adolescents and teens have it really, really difficult, but to, to the, the concept that they were showing there in suicide was, was, was much easier to kill yourself than it was to actually work their problems out. Like, the blame of, like, the whole concept of it, and it really messed with, I mean, with my mind for sure, and I'm sure lots of people, that there's 13 reasons why, why I did this, because of this, because of this, because of this. That's all your guilt. And the more you go down that guilt, the more you will, you, you'll, you're... I think it affects someone's self-worth, and then they don't do good. Right, and, and you're not doing good, and, you, and it's easy, it's easy to feel guilty than to actually meditate the on Hashem. The idea is to take responsibility. Right, responsibility. That's, That's what it is. Guilty is just an easy way out. Exactly. Right. I feel like guilty is a trauma response. Things that you feel guilty about. Could be the person that got you in a place 
that like you are constantly trying to get away from. Right. So it's not a matter of regret. It's I, a even matter though I have trauma that my mother was always late to every single one of my plays and things like that and carpools, and I'm like half hour late to my kids. I'm like, ah. I should re I should really take that child. I find that the deepest part of the guilt. Yeah. Because you can't get away from yourself okay. because it's like you're almost in a cycle. Right. So you yourself. really need to work these out. That's right. 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 That's it needs really, to work out. I know. We have so much to do. It's an easy way out. It's like, oh. Right. Not going to take responsibility. It's an easy way out. It's the it way is. that's sitting on your head all day. You wish it would just leave. For, for a person that's constantly feeling that way, it's an escape to them to just feel guilty. I feel like it's an all on my of course it. Of course it is. Of course. You don't but, have that. Uh, you what if you let it go? That. What if you let... So here's the thing. So let, let's listen mm -hmm. to the formula that he says, and let's see if you can remove this word from your literally from your vocabulary from your life i don't well, want to ever go into that yeah i want you to in your head substitute the word trauma for clipa i hate that word <laughs> the 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 I'll send you the song. I will send you the song, okay? And then just listen to the song. It 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 probably is, right? It is. It is. For sure. It is. I mean, listen to it. Right. I'm not even okay. the word right. trauma with clipa. That it's covered. That it's covered. It's covering something and you need to remove it. You need to remove it and the inside is 100% good. It's a delicious orange. The peel is terrible. You can't eat it. And the only way to get there is to remove it. Now I feel like that, um, what's that um, Instagram person? Like she's a, co a comedian, Zen. Oh, yeah, that's yes. what I'm She's like, Klippa, Klippa, remove the Klippa, right. Okay, someone said, feeling guilty. This is actually really nice. Puts us in a victim position. Feeling hopeless and despair is one doesn't have the capacity to change. Really, that's what it's about, the ability to be able to change. So he says like this. So first things first, okay? This is like the Alta Rebus formula. When do, you, when do you address this? So let's say you were shopping, let's say you were doing this, you have this feeling, you wanna push it out. So when do you do it? During your bedtime Shema, during your Cheshbon and Efesh, Yom Kippur, introspection time, okay? But how do you do it? We're not just gonna defer it to let it go into like a cyclical thing. We're actually gonna go through it in a totally different way. And the first thing we're gonna do is our favorite word, and it starts with an M, and I hope you're all doing it. We're gonna meditate. We're gonna meditate. How are we gonna meditate? We're gonna meditate on the greatness of Hashem. And we're not gonna, and, and we're gonna meditate against Hashem who we sinned against. I made a mistake. I want to, I want to bring it back to Hashem. How do I do that? What does that mean, bring it back to Hashem? There's like this Yonatan Rizal song. Um, Al Tzadaber Lelokim Kama, I'm, I'm saying, I'm singing it in my hand. Kama Hatzarot. Um, gdolot. Like, don't tell Hashem how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big Hashem is. That's the idea. Like, I'm always like, Hashem, I need money, I need a job, I need food, I need this, I need kids, right? And it's like, no, tell all those problems, like, tell all your bills, like, you don't even know how, sh how big Hashem is. Like, you tell all your kids when you're having problems, you don't know how big Hashem is. Like, just place your problems on a table right here and just tell them how big Hashem is, that Hashem can take care of any of these problems. So that's the first step that you do. Meditate on the fact that you didn't do something wrong to this person, you did something wrong to Hashem. And then you, when, when you do that, because really what you end up, otherwise you end up just seeing your worst moment. So let's say I say- It's not doing something wrong, it's disconnecting. Disconnecting, exactly. It's being unplugged from that second. And that actually brings us all the way back to what we were saying about Sitra Ahra. What is Sitra Ahra? Who is the Yitzhahar? And this is why the Yitzhahar is dressed up today as guilt. In this chapter, he's dressed up as guilt. And now we're saying, all you're doing is Sitra Ahra. You're just connecting to somebody else. You're plugging into something else and you're not plugging into Hashem. So if you think about it during your weekly review, or let's say your nightly review, whatever, let's start with monthly, okay? Rosh Chodesh, right? Or Yom Kippur, and you go through those things, and you, sometimes you can relive bad moments, but that's not bringing you to a spiritual place. It's not bringing you to something good. So the first thing is you meditate on the fact that Hashem is the greatest of all, and that you sinned against Him, and then actually, the sin becomes irrelevant. Like, um, I had asked, her, I didn't end up sending it with him, the uh, dress to Muncie, but I like messaged you, I'm like, oh, could he bring something for me? And I'm like, and you said, yeah. And I'm like, it's a dress, it's something small. And you're like, it doesn't matter what it is, he's doing you a favor. Like, it doesn't matter if it's a big package or a small package, unless you're going up to camp and it's like bringing up like, you know, I was like, is anybody going to Eric's Yisrael? Can I send two full suitcases with you, you know? But it's not like that, it was like, and you said it in a way like, it doesn't matter what it is, he's doing it. So it doesn't matter what the Avera is, it's just knowing that you unplug from Hashem. You could say Hashem, Hashem, Nuba, Ganu, Gazanu, Divarnu, I did all this stuff. 
in your mind, you should let all those like haratas just be like one, like in your mind, just imagine it. It's like one thing of being disconnected from Hashem. You're taking all these avayers that you did and what are they? Yes, some of them are worse than others, but it doesn't matter. It's all being disconnected from Hashem. So that's what you have to meditate on because when you look at it from the spiritual perspective, you're like, I'm just breaking my relationship with Hashem. It's not like about Lashon Hara. Oh my gosh, Lashon Hara. And then you start derailing about all the times that you spoke bad, right? It's not about that. It's about me not being connected to Hashem at that moment. And the truth is, like, it really helped me. Like, I mean, not so much because last night was such a great night. This morning was a little bit better. Um, but this idea where, like, let's say when you yell at, like, your kid, right? Okay, sorry. This is just a very, like, hard time for all of us, right? I mean, it's not. It's a good time. But when you recognize that it's a good time, you, you, you see it. But the problem is that you don't say, like, I'm yelling at my kid. Oh, my God, I'm such a bad person. No, you're yelling at Hashem's kid, right? Like, your children are Hashem's children, right? Because Hashem is a partner in this, right? And he's here. So... You would never, like, if you ever have, like, that annoying play date over, you know, like, I'm so hungry, I need a snack, right? And, like, if you're friends with the mom, you're like, sure, come here, have so many snacks. And if you're not, you're like, go home. Like, if you're, you'll eat, stop eating the good snacks, right? We spoke about this. <laughs> you know the good snacks. They used to be 50 cents, and now they're, like, $1.25, right? Like, no Doritos. Those are one seventy-five. I want to buy my snack because it's so full. So I know. I know. <laughs> right. But if it was, if it was like your niece, like you would just be a little bit nicer to that kid. Every time you want to yell at your kid, you look at that and you're like, "This is Hashem's kid." Also, Hashem's in the room. You don't yell at other people's kids when their mothers are there. Like you don't, unless you're like, "Ah, whatever." We're we're very close. We're sisters. I don't have any sisters, but like if it was my sister's kid, like would I yell at? Her? No, you don't. You don't yell at other people's kids in front of their parents. Just stop and say that before you're about to get upset at your kid. And you're like, this is Hashem's just. kid. What? <coughs> just. Just. <laughs> How am I? Or even the, 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 the Hashem's there watching you. Or like, oh, or Hashem's there watching, watching you. you that right. You, you Somebody's there. You know, like when you're in the stuff. park and you're like, you dropped your snack. And like, really, you're like, that was $1.25. Pick up that snack. Right? Or finish that yogurt. Right? Like, no. Hashem is in the room. And it's also Hashem's kid. And it's also like... Your, like your, even your friends or even your spouse, like everything, just imagine Hashem is in the room and you meditate on that, not in a scary way, like I still smell my principal's perfume, oh, no. it's a sleigh, like I, I know that smell, like you know what I'm talking about, like her heels, but like, like that they know, right? Like BYA, I know she's not even here anymore, but like I always remember, it was like, that was like instilled her heels. <laughs> right, everybody run. run. But it's, and it's like, like we should, I know we're saying it, making it like it's so easy, but somehow when it, the person's actually in the room, it is easy. So just bring Hashem in the room. And that's what we always have been saying this whole Tanya series is bring Hashem into your life. Bring Hashem into your life. Even if it means Hashem, why is this happening to me? Bring him into that feeling right then at that moment, because that is how you can get yourself out of that, out of that road. So how I meditate on the greatness of Hashem, not on the sin. Not on the sin, because then you start thinking, I'm a gossip monger, like, I'm a person who does bad, I'm a person who, you know, I can't control myself, I'm a Baltaiva, right? Like, people say these things, because then it's just a cover for them actually connecting back to Hashem. So number one, you meditate on Hashem, and then once you put it on the table, it's the coolest thing. Like, in my mind, like, I I'm very bad at my paperwork, like, I don't know, I, I like, Nothing should be really coming in the mail. Like, if it's in my email, I'll address it. But if it actually comes in the mail, I'm not so good about it, right? Hey, you feel good about yourself if it comes in my mail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Wait, your mail drawer? Everybody has that junk drawer, right? No, 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 like, it's not, it's not a drawer. It's not a drawer. <laughs> it's not a whole room. It's not a whole room. Of course you did. Um, if anybody's ever been to my uh -huh. house, has anybody been to my house? Like a black hole. Right. Me, right. Same here. Oh, I'm yeah, okay, yeah. Like, and my kids are like, "Did you make that appointment?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's in October." They're like, "Ma, are, did you really make it?" I'm like, "No, I didn't really make it." <laughs> I'm gonna call. But if you take all your bills, so I have this like every day. I always like not every day. I probably do it once a month. I always like text her from my sister-in-law picture. I'm like, "Paperwork day," and I like put them all out. Even the ones that I already paid, I just put them into the picture. You know, I put them all out, and I'm like, "Here are all of my problems. I have to do this, register for camp." Like, you think camp is over? No. November, we have to apply for camp already, right? Oh, yeah. And like, I have a high schooler this going into high school, right? So put all your problems on the table. I just like imagine it as like your bills. You put that out over here and you say, I need to recognize that anything that's blocking me is just me not disconnecting from Hashem. And I am going to push them aside. That's why I only do my paperwork once a month. 
Maybe it's not so good because some things are not paid on time, but I only do it once a month. And that's when I take stock of saying, is this connecting me back to Hashem? Or is this Sitra Achra? Is this me trying to be a procrastinator? Is this trying, me trying to push off my thing? So what is it? That's how you take stock. And then the moment you finish your spiritual inventory and you're done it, you face your problems, you trace it, and you say, the problem is not me that I speak Lashon. The problem is that I was not, I was betraying Hashem. It was treason. I literally betrayed the gang. And then you erase it and you give it to Hashem and he takes it. And it's like the most unbelievable feeling of like that. It's like an after Yom Kippur feeling, you know, that post Yom Kippur feeling where you're just like, ah, oh, okay, you're also hungry. You're going to sit down. You're going to eat a bagel, whatever it is. But you erase it. You know, Hashem's going to take it. And that's how you immediately feel joy. The problem is that we think tshuva is so hard. We think that it's so hard to do. So I have to do all these steps. Right? I'm gonna no. If you only knew, and this is also a new thank you Hashem song, Ikar Hanafilos Baos that Rav Cook says that the main problem is mamin bekalusa shal tshuva that we don't realize how easy tshuva is. And I feel like this is such a obviously this comes out it's Yom Kippur time, but like the fact that we're in this chapter Erev Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur is like the ultimate day of guilt. Like the world loves to be like, oh, it's your day of atonement, right? Like I got an email from work and she's like, could you meet on Monday, and bless you, at 9.30, whatever. And I was like, I was so excited to write. I'm like, actually, Yom Kippur, you know, bless you. And she's like, oh my gosh, I should have known, right? I'm like, the world knows Yom Kippur, right? And what is it? It's a day of atoning, freeing of your sin confessions. But really, what is the day of Yom Kippur? It's the day that you are closest to Hashem. Besides the fact that like we're not eating and we're not drinking and we're hungry and we're a little dizzy and we like disassociate like towards the end of the day. Besides oh, yeah. that, it's a day where I bring all my problems to Hashem. Literally, Hashem, Nubaganu, Gazan, Alachataim, and like banging, whatever. As a kid, I remember like not knowing what I was doing and like everybody was like, I'm like, do I bang now? You know, the, you know there's like three, let, let, let me find out this answer. You know there's three sets of um, Alchecha Chatanu? And then there's like the another one, one. The last one. Do you Allah Do you clap that? You do? I like once we're putting it all out here, I never know what to do with that one. We need like a berry tefillah for mommy. Like for who's like lost brain cells. The idea where that last one I never know where you to don't do. Know what I'm I know, I need the art scroll. It does it. It says Chatanu. It says Chatanu, but then... Right, but it doesn't specifically say Chatanu. By Chatanu, we do it? Okay. See, we're learning very few now. I have this thing in my head, like, when I'm trying to find... Um, but I'm trying to find out where we're up to, like by, um, like by leaning. I like listen for that last word. I'm like, what was it? I'm like Avram, and I did with Avram. Okay, find more. I'm like, okay, it's, it, we're up to Shlishi. Okay, Shlishi, right? Okay, I'm not always like in Shul then, but okay, sorry. I'm like looking at some of the comments, but okay, I'm getting distracted. Okay, so this idea where you bring all your problems to the table, and they're all, I did this wrong, and I did that wrong, and I did this wrong, and I spoke Lashon Hara, and I did Gilad Rose, and I did Abu Dazara, and I did all these things, right? And normally, if you would hear all that stuff, you would go into a very sad place. But what does meditating on those things, how does that bring you to joy? You say, all it was was a disconnection from Hashem. And the second I realized that that's what it was, I push it to the side, I hand my bills to Hashem, I tell him all my problems are yours because you're much bigger than my problems. I didn't sin because I'm a bad person, I sinned because I disconnected from you. It wasn't about the Lashon Hara, it was about me forgetting that that person is a Chelek al Kami Ma'am Mamish, and then Hashem is in that side of that person, so I betrayed Hashem. So like you start seeing people as neshamos, like why would I want to hurt that person? That person's a neshama, that person's Hashem's child, that, person's, that person is a literal piece of Hashem. And the second you do that and you face it, Hashem, it's like a little line, like you face it, it doesn't really rhyme because it's the same word. You face it, but then Hashem erases it. Hashem takes it away, and that is where the joy comes from. That's that feeling of the end of Yom Kippur, of just like, oh, like I did it. I cried my heart out. I dove in. Hashem accepted everything. That brings joy because you can now move on with your life. The things that are depressing are the things that you can't move forward from. But the second you let it go, like I tell my kids, like imagine like your knapsack, like on that first day when it's so heavy, take off the knapsack and give it to Hashem. Say, Hashem, this is yours. This is yours. I'm going to connect to you through the bad things also. I did wrong, but I'm recognizing that's from you. And that's what brings the ultimate joy. Okay. And that's what we should like really like meditate on like as we go into Yom Kippur. Like Yom Kippur, and I'm gonna, I keep mentioning Paloma, but I, I was learning this with her yesterday. 
And she was like, kind of my practice. You guys are like real, you know, in real. And she was saying that like, so then Yom Kippur is like really the ultimate day of Yichud with Hashem. And I just think I'm the worst person. It's my favorite day of the year. Your favorite day of the year. It's been there like that since I'm... It's because then what is it? Because like Yom Kippur is like literally oneness with Hashem. You're not attached to anything on this physical world. You're not wearing leather. You're not wearing makeup. You're you're wearing white. You, you're, there's no intimacy. There's no, right? Like there's that separation of being anything other than connected to Hashem. So it's the most joyful feeling because that's all we're trying to do. We were trying to do that up until today. All these chapters and everything we're learning is connect everything back to Hashem. Take your Nefesh Bahamas, bring it to Hashem. Take your Klippas, bring it to Hashem. Peel them off, everything. Bring all your problems, all your guilt, your pseudo guilt, whatever you made up in your head that is guilty, bring that all to Hashem and say, I disconnected from you. I want to connect back to you. And that actually happens on Yom Kippur. So Yom Kippur is not a sad day or a scary day. Yom Kippur is the best day. It really, really is. Like, if you make it to shul or not, like if you're home and like, I'm sure like people are listening to this are like, oh, well, I can't go to shul. So you can't go to shul, but you could do this at home. You could tell Hashem, you could literally do the deepest cheshven hanefesh on Yom Kippur. Like, I remember those nights where like, where I couldn't go to shul and like I was sitting at home and I was like so sad because I was like waiting to hear like, like even though, right, you hear those things and like it wakes you up, hear it in your head and just say like, Hashem, I'm bringing my problems to you. I disconnected from you. I want to be closer. This, like, Lefnesha and Umamin, the Kalusha Shel Tshuva, it's the easiest thing. Tshuva is so easy once you break it down like this, and then you keep doing it, and keep getting better at it, and better at it. Okay, I'm gonna end here. And ask so your well questions. Like right I know, of course, it lines up so well. Also I know, Yom Kippur. Also Rosh Hashanah, yeah. I know. It, it was, um, thank you. Um, like, Simcha, yeah. right? There was a-